It goes PJ, doesn't it? All right, so what do we do? We're doing problem 385. We're almost done, so now the taper's running. All right, so we're looking, we're looking right down the y-axis. So um, that, that bearing is here. P, the, the, the handle is there. Right, looking right down the y-axis. And the force P goes straight into it. Oh, no. We draw it like that, so it looks like the tail feathers of an arrow going into the board. So we're looking right down the y-axis. What about uh, the forces BX and AX? So there's the bearings. Here's our spool. Here's one bearing over there. Right, C-axis. Yep. So we've got AX and BX in the positive X direction. So that would be, just to stay with those, which one's on that side? That's B. B is near the handle, right? So that's BX there. Here's AX here. Is that it? The, the tension, the tension in the line is over to one side a little bit because of the windings. And that's not all of it. We're kind of looking down on it a little bit. So what we actually want is, is Tx in that view. Will that help us? Yeah, if we solve the moments about the y-axis, what's this one do? Remember, that's the that's the the person move on on the crank handle. That's P going into the board. So, what moment does that one supply about the y-axis? Well, let's do one at a time. P. Uh, why? Axis. It's parallel to that axis. It's parallel to the y axis, so it supplies no moment about it. What about BX? Nothing, because it's through, through the axis. So we have this one going that way. We know the X component. That's all we need, because the Y component is parallel to the axis. And this one's trying to push things that way, and they, they must balance. So now you can find AX from that. That's our fifth equation. And then you can find BX from this. Thank you. You're not mad at me anymore? Well, you're still mad at me. No. Because that's just your well, natural state take, now. It's going to take some time. Yeah. yeah okay. Rebuild. Okay. okay. So take some time to finish that one if you want. Thank you. I'm not going to grade them right now anyway. Okay? But that's not a bad review for, for a good three-dimensional problem. Maybe a little complicated. Uh, but if you use the plane drawings, uh, looking down a particular axis and do them carefully, um, it kind of kind of then gives you the solution there when you see that. When you see these different forces in a plane view kind of helps a bit. Okay. All right. So we had a problem going from Friday, did we not? That luggage carrier. Um, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't see how Yeah, I know. There, uh, there's some there's some way that I can splice this into the video, but I just haven't bothered to figure out how. 
<laughs> but we were working on this lug luggage carrier, uh, trying to uh, start to look at how it's going to be most, uh, how we need to make some design considerations based upon the experience of the user and ways we can look at that. So we had that one started. started we had we've gotten down to a place where we had this equation F over W equals B minus A tan alpha and uh, that's just from mo summing the moments about point C which was the axle on the wheel uh, B minus A tan over D These videos turn out to be fairly popular in, in African countries. It's kind of fun. I don't know why. I mean, they're by popular, I mean 200 people have watched them. But that's each of them. So, I don't know what it is, but I'm waiting for somebody to call me and say, We want to bring you over. Africa, bring your wife, kids too. <laughs> All right, so we got the, uh, why the F over W? You remember F is the force the user exerts on the handle. And in this case, it's just straight up. So we're not talking about walking along because then there'd be a component in the walking along direction. Why the F over W? Remember why we did that? Yeah, but, but we can make it a function of anything we want. Why do we make it F over W? Remember, we just we uh, solved the moments about C. So there was the weight at the center of gravity doing that, and F doing that, and that's how we got to this equation. But then we made it F over W. We normalized. We normalized. This way, we know what the user's force is per pound of weight in the carrier. So it's going to give us a, a fairly useful number whether they put in 25 pounds or 75 pounds. It just normalized that number. If we left the W over here, then we'll have an F for that particular load. It won't tell us how it'll change per, per load. So then the next thing we are doing, uh, we had a bunch of numbers in here. Um, we're going to vary alpha. So that's going to be our our uh, independent variable. The other numbers we left the same. So A was 8 inches, B 16, D was 48, and H was 36. No wait, D, D is going to change. No, D's, D's constant. Um, H is 36. What am I looking for? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to leave. Uh, oh, H will vary as as the angle varies because D is, D is a constant. So H isn't a part of that uh, as we've got right here. So we've got B, D, A all given. So if you graph that as a function of the angle, just putting those numbers in, and this is, it's actually more like this. There's the angle alpha, and this is that term F over W. So let's just make sure we understand that. Uh, w is the weight in the carrier. What happens when F over W is 1? What's, what's going on in terms of what the user is doing? 
if f over w equals 1. If it's 50 pounds and f over w is 1, then the force exerted by the user is 50 pounds. That's an old-fashioned suitcase that he's just holding up. It's not one of the roller ones. And the whole point of the roller ones is it reduces the amount you have to carry as the user. So you just lift up a regular suitcase, you're at f over w equals 1. That's, that's all they can do. That's, so we put in the rollers to reduce this force a little bit. So it actually brings it down quite remarkably for these pretty usual parameters we have here. And then of course, uh, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.2. Now, what does a minus number mean? What's a negative number mean for f over w? Is it impossible? You'd suspect so, since I bothered to draw it, and I'm pretty darn lazy. Yeah, it's it's it can get to a point where it's it's if it's standing up too upright, it'll start to go the rest upright, and the user would have to push down on it. Uh, not a big concern, you wouldn't think, but it's there. It's it's still a possibility. So the graph looks something like this. So let me put in a, a couple of uh, angles here. Thirty. No. How high do we need to go? Up to about sixty. So I'll do fifteen, thirty, forty-five, and sixty, something like that. So at about fifteen degrees. It's about 0.1 or so. That's just my starting point. And then it goes, and it goes something like that. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, as usual. There are certain points that might have some interest. For example, this point, where it crosses from positive force to negative force. What's going on at that point for the user? What's F over W at that point? Zero. So, at about 63 degrees, remember that's alpha, we're predicting a force necessary from the user of zero. So at 63 degrees, shouldn't even have to touch it. Because if it tilts back, that'll mean the force is going right through there and all the weight is being supported by that wheel and the user wouldn't have to touch it. That seemed like it might be your experience in the airport, though. I mean, you may have kind of been standing there at times and you're trying to find a point where you're just barely touching it with your fingers. But it doesn't stay there well, does it? It's an equilibrium point, but it's an unstable equilibrium point. It's very easy for it to go either way. And you immediately have to start putting on some force. Not a lot, but you, you have to adjust it a little bit. So at 63, there's not much to do, but it's not going to just, you know, I can't just leave it and walk away. But you don't do that anyway because you don't leave a bag unattended in the airport. What? That's what he does? That's what he's here to learn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if I was in the airport and I saw Bill, I'd say, would you carry this for me? And deliver it to, to Lefty um, in, um, in uh, New Orleans. All right, so that's, that's very light force, but 
it's going to require some attention. You know, we, not a lot. You're going to be sitting there kind of fiddling with it, trying to hang on to it. So, other points of interest. Uh, what's going on right here? That happens to occur. I, I missed my drawing a little bit. It's uh, it's up a little bit more than that. But that's what is that point? In terms of what the user needs to do. That's the, that's the maximum force you have to apply. Yeah, that's the maximum force because the curve doesn't go any higher than that. But in terms of you as the user, you know, for the situation we've got where we're just standing there, and that's why the F is upright. If we were walking, F would have to be forward a little bit to make it go forward a little bit. So you're just standing there. This is the maximum force you need to exert. Is that bad? Yeah. Seem like what? It doesn't seem like much. Yeah, well, if we're talking about 50 pounds, this is, uh, what, about, about 7 pounds, 8 pounds, somewhere in there maybe? If I drew my numbers right, actually it goes up, it looks like it goes up to a little bit closer to 0.2. I guess I can just put the drawing up for you guys. Just my audience in Somalia won't get to see it. There, there's the, there's the graph there, once you graph out that equation. But what's good about that? That's the maximum force, but it's not very much. But what's also good about it? It's, well, remember the, uh, the, the whole thing here was that we were holding it at about, you know, that, that's going to give us about the 36 degrees. So, and that, those handles are adjustable, so it's okay for, but uh, for the user, it's at the, you're at the maximum force. It's not a whole lot, but what's the sensation as you're standing there exerting that maximum force, even though it's not a lot? Remember, down here, we're not exerting any force, but the thing's ready to tip over either way. Pull down. Yeah, it's still, you still need to lift up, but it's very flat in here. So if we go any, any degrees off of that, the force isn't going to change very much. So you're not going to be fighting it. It's, not gonna, it's, it's a pretty stable point there. So if you're trying to change tickets and getting angry and tired, you're not standing here going like this, trying to fight this thing while you're trying to negotiate for, for new tickets with, the, with those, those people that have no understanding whatsoever what it's like to travel. So you can concentrate. You're okay. It's not a lot of weight. It's just hanging there in your fingers and it's very, very stable. So, all of these things then you need to go back. Anytime one of these changes, something over here is going to change and you have to go back and forth as you make this design. And then most luggage companies have different size ones anyway. Um, and it doesn't matter because the person who gets in the plane before you has a really big one that has doesn't fit in the overhead bin. It's the last space over the overhead bin for your seat. So you have to go all the way to the back with your luggage and then come all the way forward to your seat. That you can't design for. You can't design for idiots. All right. So I think that's all we got on that one there. 40. Yeah. So do we... Uh, Do we need some review? Because there's Test Wednesday. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. You do now. No, I'm trying to think of what kind of review. Well, that 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 problem helped a little bit. A lot of it, remember, especially the 3D ones, you got to visualize. And I'll do my best to make sure you've got a good drawing with it. Drive this? Yeah. Maybe one of these people could show you. 
<laughs> you were quick with that. Wow. She said no. She said no and put her finger and touched her nose. All right. That's not happening. Does, does anybody remember how we derived that? Is, is that going to be something that's on what? I mean, you don't, do you, you want to know if you need to listen anymore? Yeah. <laughs> Ever again? Yeah. No, you don't need to listen anymore. Okay. Or talk. <laughs> That's only fair. <laughs> we, we had this, uh, we had that to start with, which is, is just the drawing you saw again and the one I gave you, but with the two forces on it. So, this came from uh, solving for um, the, the force required to hold it there in equilibrium. Because if you're not holding equilibrium, one, you're not in this class, and two, the things either fall in one way or the other. And that's not the point of these luggage carriers, at least not for this problem. And one thing that's not as obvious uh, we saw, we did the moments about point, uh, I think about the axle, because that's where we've got these dimensions from. Okay. So that, that was the moment arm. And the, the, this force goes right through that axle. So this contributed no moment, only this component over here did. So that's how we got that. that uh, that sum. I mean, that, that is summing the forces about the uh, axle. I guess it's point C. Right? Yeah, about point C, the center of the wheel. Okay. Now, that's dependent upon the center of gravity being there. They may pack it. Uh, up higher. What happens in terms of its stability if the center of gravity is higher? Balance better than balance. It would? Sure. I mean, why, why would it balance better? Because you know, farther you push it out of the Yeah. Uh, no, well, I, don't, I think it's more the other way around, isn't it? If we've got the drawing we've got there, and its weight is right over that wheel, if it moves a little bit, if you put a little bit of angle on it, then the weight moves out maybe to here, and now you have a little bit of a moment arm which is why once you come off that angle from the equilibrium a little bit, it starts to fall because now there's a torque, uh, a moment being applied to it that's not counterbalanced without the hand up there. But if that is higher, say the weight's up, actually I'll have to make it a lot, up or uh, upright. The weight's right here, missed again. Somewhere in between. <laughs> Alright, there, there's our there's our weight right over the axis. And if we have that same tilt in degrees, which cause that much moment arm, if we do that same tilt here, since there's a lot longer point there, we get that same tilt, we're gonna be pushed off a lot farther. There'll be a greater moment arm. If you so it's more degrees, but the same distance will be small. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If you're, oh, if you're talking about the you distance, the handle spurs are. Yeah, you have to handle that much further yeah. to okay. fall. Yeah. Okay. Other ones for review? Questions? We can pull up some 3D problems and do them. Pick one out of the book or pick one out of the homework. What's your pleasure? 
here to aid and assist. Number 94, is that a homework one? How you saw it, Dana?
we, we know the direction of T1 and T2. They're cables that pull, and we know they pull from one place to the other, so we can find the unit vectors for both. That would be, I guess we'll just call it one in the direction of T1, since that point out at the front isn't labeled, but we could label it. Alright, so you can find that unit vector. Does anybody need help with that? That will definitely be something you need to do Wednesday. Oh, I got that. Nope. Okay. You do the same thing for T2. So the magnitude of those two is all you need. So then what to do? Some of the forces. Was it really helpful at that point? Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> so. It's not clear um, what's going on at C. I guess there's a component in each of the directions as possible. So we'd like to eliminate those. We have to find them. You're you're supposed to find them, but uh, in terms of finding the T, if we get rid of those, that would help. What could we do? What if we sum the moments about the Z axis? Would that help us find T1 and T2? Again, it kind of helps to draw a view as if looking down that axis. So there's Y and X. We're looking right down the Z axis now. The sign now lays here like that, and these two forces off kind of like that. And then we also have a force, a lateral force D. So that means uh, we want to find the Y component of D. There may be more to D than that, but it said find the lateral component of D. T1 and T2, but 
it could help us. Um, what would help us find? We're looking for, remember, the lateral force of D, and that is parallel to AB. So that wouldn't be of a concern in the equation. CY wouldn't be a concern, but CX would be there. We could, we could uh, looks like we could find CY, CX if we did that. something like that. There's A, B axis. And so Z goes up through that. We're looking parallel to the Y axis, so X would go out like that. And then the sine would be right there with those two tensions going right through that axis, so they're not part of the unknown. The weight, which I assume is at the center of the sign, can they say anything else? No, so yeah, with the center of mass and the center of the rectangle, so it does say that. Oh, C is, C is a ball and socket joint. So, uh, we do have these three possible components just to help it keep it from swinging. And then, uh, that's at midpoint. So, uh, C, C, Z would have no play in it. C, Y would have no play in it. Why not? C, Z goes right through the same axis, but C, Y wouldn't have any component in the moment equation about A, B either. Why not? Parallel. Parallel. So we only have this CX to worry about. So we can find CX. CZ goes up there. C1. So uh, from that we could find CX. So that would help. We're supposed to find that anyway. Looks like you, you most likely you, did, you need to sum a couple of forces, sum a couple uh, moments in different places. Probably sum the forces in all three directions. Um, but that, I think, is one that's not as obvious as to sum the moments about AB, because it does eliminate the two tensions. Uh, it leaves just one force alone, and you need it anyway. Did you want the answers to those? So it's like some of the moments at A, B, some of the moments, well, we already talked about Z, that'll help get T1 and T2 in relation to each other. Some of the moments about the Y axis would probably help, especially once we had CX, because if we sum about the Y axis, D doesn't matter. CY doesn't matter, CZ doesn't matter, and we can find then the two tensions and be done with it. So, do you want those numbers? Um, the lateral, let's see, where's T1 and T2? Oh, T, T1 is 0.347. Oh, because they all pass through the 
axis. You can you can show that C uh, or what C Z equals no yeah C Z. C Y equals zero. Okay. And so C you've got the magnitude point six seven six eight. That's the two components left over put together, so that should help you. Since we're done on the next set of two, and then we'll just get the rest of them. I assume that's the test. <laughs>